here from the Denver Post. Thank you, Nick. Hey, Michael. Before the game, I asked you about Austin, and you said uh, it's a great story, um, the, the guys that you guys are using and that are succeeding in these moments. Can you describe what the bench was like uh, when Austin went on his run in the fourth quarter over the final six minutes? Yeah, you know, it's – I couldn't be happy for the kid. You know, and I just told that team, I said, you know, think about this. Guy was sitting at home for two and a half months waiting for his phone to ring. Uh, and it wasn't ringing. And, and that to me is just uh, crazy to even think about. You know, Austin Rivers is a good player. You know, he's played in 45 playoff games prior to this 2021 playoffs. Um, and it just worked out for him and us that he's here. Uh, and the funny thing is, Mike, you know, he scored 16 points in that fourth quarter, shooting into a really big basket. Prior to that, I felt he was turning down open shots. He wasn't shooting the ball. And I said to him three or four times, you know, Austin, let it go. Let it fly. Shoot the ball when you're open. And you know, eventually in that fourth quarter, he did. And he made big basket after big basket. So um, we're a resilient group. We're a tough group. And we take, you know, like the Statue of Liberty, man. We take everybody. You come here and you, you can bring something to the table to help us win a game. Uh, we're going to throw you out there. Whether it's Shaq, whether it's Marcus, whether it's Austin, uh, could not be more proud of our group. Uh, the biggest thing is this, though. To be up 2-1 is great, uh, but you can never be satisfied. You can never exhale. You can never come up for air. Uh, we have to have the, a better mindset to start the game in game four. We were not ready to play tonight. They came out, punched us in the mouth. Proud of our guys because we answered right away. We went on a run of our own, a big run to close out that first quarter to get back in the game. Uh, but that cannot be our mindset to start game four. We have to come out with the hit first mentality uh, and play with the lead instead of playing from behind. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Hey, Coach. A um, little, little bit unusual question, as is my want. Um, Mayor Michael Hancock was a little grumpy during the fourth quarter about the time it was 91 91 because he couldn't find the game on TV. Could uh, you give him a recap of, of, of how you won this game and maybe even give him a call in the morning to make him feel better about you guys being up 2-1 in this series? Yeah, well, I feel bad he wasn't able to watch it. Uh, Mayor Hancock and I uh, have a great relationship. We get along. So I'll definitely reach out to him, kids, and, and kind of give him a recap. But uh, the funny thing is this. In, this. in the third quarter, neither team could score. You know, that, that was a, a, a really ugly quarter, 20 to 20. In the fourth quarter, neither team could get a stop, 30, 36 to 36. And even late, you know, uh, I thought they made a couple of really tough shots, as Dame and CJ are known to do. Uh, but we talked about going into this series. Uh, the three-point line will be a really uh, important factor in determining who wins or loses. Uh, game one, I think they had 19. Game two, they had 16. Game three, they had 14. So that number is going in the right direction, and they only shot 31%. Uh, so I thought our defense was much improved. Uh, Nicola was fantastic, 36, 10, and 5. Uh, and the bench, once again, the bench has been a deciding factor in all three games. Who's ever bench has won, the head to head output has won. So proud of our bench group for coming in. Uh, and providing a lift and a spark for us. Brandon Cristal, KOA. Well, and you know how many threes they're going to shoot, Coach. How good did it feel to knock down 20 of 38 and then only make 14, especially with Dame's struggles until those last couple? Yeah, it was, uh, Brandon, it was great to see. Uh, obviously, they, they were up big early. I forget uh, what the exact margin was. But Nicola comes down, hits back-to-back -back threes, and somehow we weathered that storm. And that was really important. Uh, and then we go on. I think we closed the first quarter on a 19-4 to run, uh, which obviously is great offense and terrific defense. Um, but, you know, I mean, Michael Porter knocks down three, Nicola four, Austin five, guys off the bench. And we had a lot of guys contribute to those 20 May threes. And, you know, if you're going to be open, you have to shoot it. You know, obviously, they gave us some different looks. They changed up some matchups. They went a lot smaller tonight. Cantor only played five minutes. And I thought late in the game, just playing through Nicola in the post was very effective. He's going to score. He's going to draw the foul. Or he's going to make the right play and get Aaron Gordon to dunk. So 
um, you know, game four will be its own entity, and we have to be ready for that one. Vinny Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Yeah, Michael, you've kind of touched on it multiple times, but but what kind of things can you do to, to guard against complacency going into game four? Is it something you just have to kind of repeat and repeat and repeat, or, or is there something you can actually do to, to kind of guard against that? Yeah, I think I just have to go around the locker room and smack him in the face, wake him up. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about it, but really ultimately it comes down to our players' maturity, uh, understanding, especially for the guys that have been here who have player experience. Uh, you know, being up 2-1 is great. It's the same situation they were in. They came into our building, went, uh, won game one, and we were able to even it up. And, uh, you know, they're going to come out ultra aggressive because they're not going to want to go back to Denver down three to one. So we're, we're going to get everything, the kitchen sink, you name it, uh, come Saturday afternoon. Very quick turnaround, a one o'clock game on Saturday. Uh, I think our game's on the Oxygen Network, so hopefully you guys can watch that uh, when it airs. Ashley Neville, Mile High Sports. Hey, Coach. So you guys have been pretty good on the road all season. Um, what's the key to that? You guys continue to be on the road, especially with the fans now back in the fans. Um, how do you prepare differently for that? To be honest, Ashley, you know, we don't prepare any differently. You know, uh, our preparation is the same, one through 72 in the regular season, and now through three games in the postseason. Um, I think to win on the road consistently, and, and I believe – uh, we had one of the best road records in Nuggets history this year. Uh, to be a really effective road team, uh, you have to have mental toughness. You have to go into somebody else's gym and have a just us mentality. Uh, your defense has to travel. You have to be able to guard teams on the road. And you can't beat yourself up with turnovers. Um, so we did a better job in that area tonight in terms of only allowing 15 points off our 14 turnovers. But our guys are battle tested. You know, we're not afraid. We've gone into some of the tougher places to play. And we've won games. This is a tough environment to play. They have a great crowd here, and they make a really hard, a very difficult uh, arena to come in and get wins. But uh, hopefully we can find ways to continue doing that moving forward. Jacob Toby, Nine News. Hello? We'll, uh, we'll try to get back to you there, Jacob. We're going to move on. We'll go with Joel Rush Forbes. Hey, Coach. Congrats on the win. Uh, you guys pretty much dominated in paint points in the first two games, but that kind of flipped tonight. Um, I'm just wondering if you saw anything that was the cause for that and how you might address that. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we did such a good job guarding the three-point line tonight. And when you take one thing away, usually that exposes you in other areas. Uh, I think a lot of the damage was done in that first half. They had 30 in the paint. And in the first quarter, it seemed like all the first 10 baskets were at the rim, easy layups. Uh, they were setting a lot of rip screens, didn't have enough ball pressure, didn't have enough physicality to start, and they were just cutting and moving wherever they wanted. Uh, I thought that improved as the game went along. Uh, but as I said earlier, Joel, it's really tough to have guys be up, your pickup points are higher, take away the threes, uh, to limit that team to 14 threes. And a lot of those, I probably three or four came in the last two, three minutes. It was a tremendous job that does open you up in other areas. Being selfish, hopefully we can be great in both areas because that's what it's going to take come uh, game four. What about Esteban from Cordova? We're going to talk here from him? We're going to try Jacob one more time. And, uh, we'll try Esteban. Go ahead, Jacob. Coach, you got me now? Sorry. Yep. Um, does, it, does, does it all concern you that they were chipping away at the end and getting back in it? Uh, you know, they were down three. They just kind of kept hitting those threes real quick at the end of the game. Does, it, does that concern you at all, just trying to close things out? In both games? No, I mean, we got the win. I mean, they're, they're a great team. They're a dangerous backcourt. Uh, you know, and you're, you're trying to tell your guys not to foul, take away the three-point line. Uh, the degree of difficulty of the shots they were making at the end uh, was a very high one. So, I mean, these are playoff games. Teams are going to make runs. Teams are going to make shots. Uh, very pleased that we were able to pull out the win. Uh, I think Monte was trying to pad Nicola's offensive rebounding stats at the end. That's why I decided to miss those. But very unlike Monte Morris. Um, but, you know, they're, they're a good team. They're, they're, they're going to put pressure on your defense. All right, Coach, we'll finish up with Esteban Abed. My guy. 
Hello, coach. Thank you very much. Uh, congrats for the win. Uh, for second time, Portland finished without uh, Yusuf Nurkic with six personal foul. What can you tell me about that and the game of Faku uh, finding the way to to get out uh, Yusuf Nurkic uh, as it uh, Gordon Aaron Gordon? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think um, that's a really good point, uh, Esteban. You know, uh, Nurk is a really big part of what that team does on both offense and defense. Uh, and to get him in the foul trouble that he's gotten in these last few games uh, and having him out towards the end of the game was really important. You know, Nurk's a load. He's a good basketball player. Uh, he facilitates for them on offense. He, him, CJ, and Dane have a great sy synergy on the court. Uh, defensively, he's a presence. Um, so getting him in foul trouble has definitely been uh, to our advantage. Uh, regarding Faku, uh, Cordoba's number one son, you know, he had eight rebounds tonight. Uh, and that's one area, I think, if you had to say that was the one area that we struggled in tonight, the rebounding. This was the first game in this series where the offensive rebounding tilted in their favor. Uh, they had 14 offensive rebounds, I believe, for 17 points. Uh, so we have to do a much better job collectively of rebounding the basketball when they do miss. But what you love about Faku, you know, he's five foot nothing, but he goes out, gets 11 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, two steals, and one block shot. He might be averaging one block shot a game in this series, which is really incredible. So he got one vote for uh, six man of the year. I hope he gets a bunch of votes for our rookie team. Uh, he, he's a huge part of what we're doing, and I couldn't be more proud of Facundo Campaso from Cordoba. Thank Thanks, you. Coach.